In this video, you will see how UFT1 uses artificial intelligence to compose a single automated test script that will run on multiple platforms and browsers. With UFT1, you can test more, in less time, and with less effort. In this video, we will discuss the Get Value feature that was added in the UFT 2021 version. The Get Value feature allows you to get the value of an AI object or a text field. In this video, we will discuss two use cases in which this feature can be very useful. So let's take a look at the, this uh, screen of the Advantage Online Shopping. We have here the username field and it has the value that I've entered, for example, John. If we do the identification on the screen, which I already did, we can see that this field is being identified by the text username, which is the name of this field. Let's click edit here. So let's assume that what we would like to do is we would like to get the value inside of John and to validate that it's correct. So we cannot choose the action of get value from here. So, so let's choose the click operation and add it to the test. Let's go back to UFT now. So we have here this line of input username and click. So we'll remove the click and replace it with get value. The get value function returns a simple string with the value of the input. So we can assign it for some variable, simply like this. And since it is now a simple string, we can use any VBString or UFT function manipulations on it. For example, we can print it to the report using a syntax like this. And of course, we can also validate that its value is correct. And in case it isn't, we can fail the test and also print it to the report. It may look something like this. As you can see, it's a simple string comparison of uh, VB script. And in case they are not equal, then we can uh, have a clear message to the report saying that we got an unexpected username and with the value that we got. Let's quickly execute uh, the test now so we can see the result. You can see the test has passed and we have this uh, event here that we have added saying that the username is John. We're not seeing the error event because the strings are equal. That is one use case of uh, get value. The second use case I would like to demonstrate is to using get value on a text field. Usually the most common example for this is to check a price. So let's uh, close this and uh, let's go to, for example, the tablets page scroll down a little bit and let's assume that we would like to check the price of this uh, of this tablet the $479 so we'll start of course by first doing the identification you can just do reinspect here let's add the text so we can see here that uh, the text is detected the most simple thing that we can check is of course that this text appears on the screen we can just uh, click it here, we can choose the operation of verify, and we can do add to test. What it gives us is the following line. It finds the text block with the expected price and check that it exists. Of course, that would be a bad practice to use something like this, because this check will pass if this price appears anywhere on the, on the screen. So the better approach would be to bind this price to the item that we want. We can do that using the relation identifier like we showed in previous videos. We can go back to the inspect here, click on this text box, click edit, and we can add a relation. So the relation we want to add is with the item that we want to check its price. So now we will again choose verify that exists and add to test. Let's look at the code now. So now our code says that we would like to check that the text containing the text $479 with the anchor above the text of the item that we want exists. If this check passes, it means that the price exists. 
There are several limitations to this approach as well. If we go back to the site, for example, if we had another item beneath it here and it had the same price, then the rule of uh, having this text with the item name above it will still apply. So we'll get a false positive. It will say that it exists, but it, this is not actually the text that we are looking for. Also, if the price is wrong, we will not know what is the real price and we won't be able to clearly print it to the report as we did in the previous example. So now that we understand the problems with those two approaches, let's talk about the third approach, which is the best practice for doing such verifications. So let's go back to the AI identification and choose again the price that we would like to verify. Let's click edit. The only difference from the previous approach is that now we will check this checkbox saying ignore text. What this checkbox means is that we would like to identify this text uh, control without specifying the text inside it, without specifying the associated text. So the way this works is that usually you need to provide uh, some other identification. In this case, this is the relation. Usually you cannot just ignore the text and expect uh, the AI to understand which text you mean. But if you provide a relation and then you click the ignore text, that means that it will give you the text that is the nearest based on the identified criteria, in this case, the relation. So that means that it will give the text that is right below uh, the HP Pro tablet text. If we look at the image, we can see that, the, for example, the follow us text is also right below the HP Pro tablet. But since the price is the nearest, this is the one that we'll be getting. So now we can add this to, the, to our test. Let's take a look at the result. So the result is very similar to the line above, where the only difference is that the associated text, which is the price, is being replaced by a constant. The make any text means that we would like to get any text that is there. So now instead of a click, we'll use the get value. Please note that in the UFT1502 version, we already had a method that's called getText, which in this case will do the exact same thing. So now we can, of course, store it in some variable. Let's call it the price. And from this point, we can print it to the report and perform any comparison that we would like. For instance, it may look something like this. So we'll print the price to the report and then we'll check whether the price is the expected one and if not, we'll add to the report a statement that's saying the price is wrong. So we can delete the first two approaches and now we can just execute our test to see that it is correct. So if we check the report, we can see now the custom event that we have added, printing the price. And of course, we're not seeing the error event because the price is correct. So that would be the best approach for checking stuff like a price and the text that are dynamic and variable based on their relation to constant text. So those were the two use cases where get value can really help you and add the smart verification to your tests. Thank you for watching this video.